What is going on everybody? Today we are analyzing the tape of offensive tackle Jawan Taylor, one of my favorite tackles in the NFL. Uh, this guy's unique in his pass set, he's unique in his technique, and he's a guy that in my opinion still has a lot of developing to do, but the guy's shown a lot of flashes, and we're going to talk about all of that today. Uh, I do think that in terms of run blocking, he has to get better, but in terms of pass blocking, the guy's very, very stout. And I want to get just right into this film breakdown. We're going to start with this first rep. Taylor's going to get vertical. He's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Chris Jones, one of the best defensive linemen in the NFL. He's going to do a really nice job anchoring down. Uh, to me, Jawan Taylor has really, really, really good play strength, and it flashes on tape. Over and over and over again, he does a great job anchoring down against power. I think that may be his biggest asset. Very strong, very physical, can handle anyone, right? And I mean, you can just take this play as an example. If you can handle Chris Jones, if you can fully anchor down against one of the most powerful persons in the NFL, you can do it pretty much against everyone. Really, really nice rep. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and jump forward into the next rep. I do want to point something out before we get into the actual rep. Notice how Taylor's right leg is super far back relative to the tackle, the left tackle here specifically. And I do want to just point it out, right? His stance is a little bit different. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just want to point that out. But you also see it when he gets out of his stance. It's also a little bit different. It looks different than most tackles. Uh, he's a little bit more bent forward in my opinion. And that's okay because it actually works for him. Right, you can see how his back is slightly arced. Again, doesn't matter because it works for him. It actually works often, right? And again, I do think Jawan Taylor is one of the better pass blockers when it comes to offensive tackles. Uh, obviously, when it comes to run blocking, you could say he needs to approve just a little bit. And we'll get into that a little bit later on in this film breakdown. I really want to talk about his pass blocking first. So let's go ahead and get into the next rep. So part of what makes this guy a great pass blocker is the quickness out of his stance. And you'll notice that a lot. You'll notice how fast he is out of his stance. And I think that goes a really, really long way. Um, we'll slow this one down here and we'll see if we can kind of catch it. You'll notice as the ball is about to get snapped, Taylor's already moving. Bam, he's out of there. Very, very fast, very quick, very explosive. And that's important. Because as a tackle, if you can get out and hit your landmark before the defensive end can, you're going to win the rep. And in this instance, you see him doing just that, right? He gets to his spot. He kind of waits for the defensive end on this rep because he hits his landmark. So that's a really, really nice job. Good job taking on the power, shutting down the defensive end, allowing your quarterback to hit his target. Really nice job in that rep. Let's go ahead and get to the next point. Just sticking with that same narrative, the quickness out of his stance. You see it again on this rep really explosive in my opinion man and these are these are the little things right that allow a guy to have success and win the individual rep really really nice job getting out of his stance look at that explosive nice step and this is kind of what he's going to bring to the chiefs in my opinion uh, that to really nice punch there making good contact with the defensive end not allowing him to push you back beautiful rep let's go ahead and get into the next play all right, you guys, check this next rep out. You got a defensive line game here by the defensive end and defense tackle, and Taylor does a really nice job processing it and picking it up. That's exactly what I want to watch when I watch an offensive lineman. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it. Now, Taylor's going to make contact with the defensive end first. And this is a much harder block for Taylor because he has to pass his guy off first, and then he has to come back and see that second guy. So again, much harder for him to pass it off, come back around, get his hands on the second guy, and be able to shut that second guy down. That right there is a beautiful job. Really, really like it. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. One of the important things about playing tackle and really analyzing certain guys, watch a tackle against a good defensive end. Like, Taylor can dominate any backup, but when you're going up against Joey Boza, that's completely different, right? In this instance, he does a really, really nice job. One of the things I want you guys to take away from this rep is Boza's going to give Taylor a hezzy to the inside. You see it within the rep. As Boza's getting out of his stance, he's going to fake slightly to the inside, and then he's going to hit the outside. There's the fake. Just back that up. He's going to fake it to the inside, come back to the outside, and Taylor does not fall for it. He sees it, good contact. It's a really, really nice rep, once again, by the tackle. 
not falling for that hezzy, right, is something that you have to be able to do it for your tackle. Because the last thing you want is when Boza gives Taylor the inside fake, it's for Taylor to get caught off balance, leaning to the right, and then Boza hits the corner and gets to the quarterback. So really nice job not falling for it, making good contact, and giving your quarterback time. All right, you guys, check this next rep out. This time, Boza's going to give a fake to the outside, and he's going to spin back to the inside. And Taylor does a good job handling it once again, and the quarterback throws it for a nine-yard touchdown. Great job, in my opinion, exploding out of his stance, getting to his landmark. And as Boza fakes this to the outside, sets it up to come back to the inside, Taylor does a good job handling it, not leaning, not get put into a bad spot. This is a beautiful job. Uh, from a technique standpoint, this is on point. I love the way this guy gets out of his stance, especially since he has his right leg so far back. Uh, you can tell with this guy, this really works for him. That's a beautiful job right there in his technique. Absolutely love it. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. All right, you guys, check this rep out and watch the power behind his punch. Great job displacing the defensive end here. Really solid, stout punch and just dominating, man. That right there is beautiful. And again, I think this is what makes Taylor really good in his vertical sets. And do keep in mind, all of his pass sets right now that we've looked at so far are vertical sets. There's other type of pass sets that I'll show you here in a second. But on this play here, great job again getting out of his stance, making contact, great punch, not falling for the move by that defensive end. And then look at that, man. Look at that punch. That's just a beautiful job with his left hand right there. Bam, just controlling the guy. Being able to do this right here to a 300-pound defensive lineman, that's not typical. It's just a beautiful job right there by Taylor. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Alrighty guys, as I mentioned in the last play, there are different type of sets. There's the vertical sets, jump sets, quick sets, 45 degree set, a bunch of different sets, right? Uh, on this play, this is going to be a quick set because it's a play action, which means Taylor's going to basically just get right up, make super quick contact. This rep is beautiful, man. In my opinion, this is arguably one of the best reps I I've seen so far of Taylor. He's going to quickly set. And the defensive lineman's going to make contact, but notice how Taylor with the left hand is going to snatch right there. So what Taylor's doing is he's going to attack the hands of Thibodeau, right? Thibodeau has his hands to the inside. And what the defensive lineman's going to do is basically he wants to break the contact. He's going to break it right there. Just a really nice job being able to stay in front of it. Near Kayvon Thibodeau, a very fast defensive lineman, and basically just shut it all down. This is a really, really nice, clean rep. He fights Kayvon Thibodeau's hand-to-hand -hand combat. Great job just being able to stick with him, mirror him, stay in front of him, and not let him get to your quarterback. That's a beautiful rep right there by Taylor. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and jump into his run reps. Uh, I want to start it off just talking a little bit about that power. I think it is one of his biggest assets. He's very strong. And you see it in this run rep here. He's, I mean, he's so powerful. He's going to knock this guy out of the screen. Um, really nice rep, right? And we're going to talk about, you know, a lot of different things, right? His reachability, the power, all that type of stuff. This is a really, really nice job. Great job getting out of his stance. Great power, man. Like, to me, this is absolutely beautiful. To be able to make that type of contact and to displace that defensive end that much that this guy literally falls outside of the screen. Like, to me, that's a really, really nice job on this outside zone run. Remember, the Kansas City Chiefs do this a lot. Like, they run these zone plays a whole ton. That's a beautiful job right there, right? It just kind of shows that power that this guy has. All right, you guys got another zone play to the left of the screen. Really nice job again by Taylor to make contact with 47, turn him sideways the way he does, and open up a nice lane for the running back. This one goes for 23 yards. This one is because of Taylor, in my opinion. When you're able to make contact on a zone play and turn your guy, this is exactly what I want to see from the front side tackle. Really, really, really nice job, in my opinion. Now, keep in mind, Taylor is still 25 years old, so he's going to get so much better in the next two to five years. But an area he does not have to get better at is getting out in space. Check this rep out, man. Beautiful job. You're going to pick up only six yards. But that right there is beautiful, man. This stuff right here for a guy who's over 300 pounds is very, very difficult. Gets out in space, finds that 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four corner, and look at that right there, man. That is beautiful. 
to be able to get out there, make really nice, clean contact, put someone down like that, again, just kind of shows the power. Beautiful job. Alrighty, guys. Now, I do think that Taylor has to obviously get better. And one of the things that he needs to improve on is his reach blocking on zone runs specifically when he's the backside guy so in this instance he has to cut off number 56 here the linebacker and he's not going to be able to get 256 now this is not an easy block all right i'll tell you guys this right now um to be able to get to 56 is difficult but it's not something that's impossible some guys are able to do it he's not great at it yet but that doesn't mean he can't continue to develop and can't develop this part of his game all right uh, again in my opinion, you got to be able to get to number 56. Now, I know it's a hard block. And even if you don't cut him off, you got to stick with him. And at the very least, hit him on the back side of it, right? Like 56 here blows the play up. And Taylor kind of just gives up, right? Like he doesn't really chase the guy. Um, and 56 won the guys that ends up making the play, right? Just to kind of get to that point, uh, here's another play. He has to cut off number 54. And he's not able to do it. All right, so you got to do just a little bit of a better job. I do know it's a 49-yard run, so it doesn't really matter. A 54 isn't that good of a linebacker regardless. But the point of the play is for Taylor, you got to be able to get out in front of 54 and stop him. You're the backside blocker here, so you got to get to your backside block. That is not good enough, in my opinion. Uh, really nice job by the running back to pick up the 49 yards. With that being said, let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Here's another inside zone run. Taylor this time has a cutoff block on the full right technique defensive lineman. He does get there on this play, but I almost feel like he knows this is something he has to get better at. And in this instance, as he gets there, he slightly overplays it. Uh, what I mean by that is he, as he gets there, it's almost like he gets too far and the defensive lineman's able to kind of go over the top of it and he makes the play, right? Zone runs is the one thing I think this guy has to improve on. Again, I think he will, but I want to just show you guys a couple more reps of him struggling a little bit with his reach blocking. So you have an outside zone run on this play, and you're going to see Max Crosby's going to blow the play up, and you're going to lose five yards on this play. Uh, I want to talk about this play a little bit and kind of talk about the assignment. So the center here is going to take the one technique. The guard here is going to take the linebacker. And you're going to see Ingram go to the right. He's going to end up taking, I believe that's a safety. And Taylor's left to take Max Crosby. Now, here's the thing. You got to be able to reach and, and get to this block. Now, I'm kind of watching Taylor struggle to reach. It almost seems like he over pursues this again. You know, as he gets out of his stance, it seems like maybe he expects Max Crosby to start flowing to the right, maybe get on top of Taylor. And Taylor maybe didn't expect Crosby to just hit the underneath. But regardless, Taylor has to do a better job. Not everybody is going to over pursue if you get out in front of them. A guy like Crosby may come underneath. And again, you got to do a better job being able to make these plays. You got to do a better job being able to get to your block on these type of plays. Not a major deal, right? Again, he's going to continue to improve. And there's also a lot of really good reps, right? So I think that's the first thing you have to consider. Uh, these bad reps are cherry-picked reps. That's a big part of it. But I think at this point, we've shown enough reps that we know factually what he can and can't do. But I do want to show you guys two final plays. All right, guys. So this play here is going to be a split zone. You're going to see the tight end here uh, be the backside seal. So it is a zone play. You're going to see Taylor here seal the defensive lineman. Do understand that in this play, the action is different for Taylor. So although it's a zone run, Taylor's going to do a great job on Belil Nichols, the defensive lineman. And what I mean by the action is different. He's not necessarily reaching far right or far left or double and climbing or any of that stuff. He's simply sealing this out. So for me, when I watch Taylor do this, he does a great job at it. He moves people that are oftentimes bigger than him. And you see it right here where he's able to move Nichols out of the gap. I mean, that right there is great movement. But Lil Nichols is a good defensive lineman. He's big, he's strong, he's powerful. And you see Taylor push him out. Again, Run blocking is definitely the area that this guy has to improve at, but it's not like he's like a bottom five tackle. He's still a top tier tackle when it comes to run blocking. Overall, right, he's likely a top 12 to 15 tackle in the NFL, right? And that's not a bad thing. Top 10 to 15 means you are one of the best tackles in the NFL. You're one of the best tackles on planet Earth, right? That's what that means. Now, recently I was watching a different video and I saw someone point out that 
Taylor oftentimes is missing blocks and it's some sort of issue of his. Uh, specifically how he swims over guys and he kind of lets guys go unblocked. Um, and I heard that it was apparently an issue, but I do want to say that in this instance here, this is a design play. Taylor's going to go to the right of Dermot Jones here and 85 is here to trap him. Assuming 85 makes his block, a six lineman here makes his block. Taylor's able to get up to the linebacker there. The lane should develop right there. Obviously, it doesn't work like that because Jones is a good defensive lineman. He's going to get past the tight end. Uh, that too, Taylor doesn't do a good enough job either. But it's not that Taylor's missing locks or there's some sort of issue. He doesn't know what's going on. All right, this is by design. I just wanted to point that out. And I want to show you guys one final rep here. On this rep, Taylor's going to do a great job double teaming, getting up to the next level, and just doing a nice job, right? And the running back here is going to pick up 22 yards. So really nice job by Taylor. Um, so again, it's not all negative reps when it comes to run blocking. I do hope that point gets across. And just to kind of wrap the video up, when it comes to Taylor, his biggest asset is his pass blocking. And there's no argument for that. The guy is a top five pass blocking offensive tackle. He has great punch, great technique, great balance, footwork. Everything is there that you want to see in a top tier pass blocker. And in my opinion, the Kansas City Chiefs got a really, really good tackle. And I look forward to kind of analyzing the offensive line uh, pretty much every week this week. You know, we watched the Chiefs last week a couple times. We did a lot of Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith, you know, thorough analysis. Uh, but this year we will be following the Chiefs. So subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We'll have a lot more content coming up. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time with another video.